YouTube, welcome back to another video. It's KJ here. Today's video, we have a reaction for y'all. This reaction is called Craziest Courtroom Moments of All Time. Now, if you're a real, 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 real OG, I did this video like the start of my channel before I became a YouTuber and then I quit YouTube. So basically, I did this video with well, a video like this in the past way shorter this video is 32 33 so i guess this is an updated video on the on craziest courtroom moments shout out to dre dre is the one that sent this video in told me to react to it shout out to you i appreciate everybody sending me recommendations to do videos for the past four days i've been really really sick but today i had enough strength in my body to get up and do a video for y'all so i hope y'all enjoy this reaction don't forget to like comment and subscribe also more reactions are coming soon i told y'all i'm done with the weed tube i'm gonna start this new path I'm trying to not get deleted from youtube and be a regular youtuber so hopefully y'all enjoy these reactions i'm putting out hopefully they're entertaining to y'all because me personally i like doing reactions you just you know you you get to enjoy the video also you get to it entertain y'all and y'all get to see it too and make your opinion so like i said like comment and subscribe i'm not gonna do too much talking i've been talking for a minute now so we're gonna start the video right now let's get the screen record going screen record three two one screen record going starting the video now the hand that wait 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 hold on hold on you point way too fast the hand the hand that pulled the trigger that killed your sons the hand that pulled the trigger that killed your sons what now masturbates to the memory if I had if I had a kid if my kid got killed and the killer said. The hand that pulled the trigger now master it would take the army, uh, Navy SEAL, every police department to pull me off of him if I was a mother. Me personally. That's like a that's like a different level of disrespectful. What? No. You just give me forty years. Sir. Yes. You just gave me 40 years. Well, guess what? Sir, what? You trying to fight his attorney? This is Jaleel Smith Riley. I, who is facing charges for this murder in Michigan. Smith Riley was involved in an armed robbery on November 16th, 2013 in Norwood, where he and two other men approached a parked car. Inside the parked car was 20-year-old Portia Brooks and her boyfriend, Aaron Martin. Smith Riley knocked on the window with a handgun and forced Martin, who was in the passenger seat, out of the car. Jaleel then proceeded to go through Aaron's pockets and demanded his cash. Once Jaleel had taken every dollar Aaron had, he then took his life with a shot to the head, causing permanent brain damage. However, Jaleel wasn't done there. Right after shooting Aaron, he then leaned into the car and- Did you ever wonder why some individuals can right devour any food too. they desire without gaining weight? While you- Fired at Brooks, who was sitting in the car, twice. Like, she died stuff like this, later. stuff like this is just like, it's like, I don't even know if I should say anything because it's like, but it's just crazy how people just, people just feel like they could take something that's yours. And then on top of that, like you didn't, you didn't have to kill the girl. I, I could see everybody goes through hard stuff, but Robin, if you're going to rob somebody, I don't feel like Robin, I'm not condoning Robin. Robin is bad. You should get a regular job. And don't steal from people but if you if, if if that's your life and that's what you do why do you have to kill the person to like why do you have to take a life 
when, when they already gave you everything they had. The, the thing just said he gave you all his money. So why did you shoot him? Just take the money and, and go. That, that's what I don't understand with these robbers and these people that, you know, participate in things like this. It's like, you got the money. Clearly, they're already probably scared shitless. And then you shoot him in the head. Luckily, he lived. But you kill an innocent woman? For what? You know? Not only is her life over, but your life is over. You know? When, when, when probably if you just robbed him, you probably probably wouldn't have got the sentence he got like i said i saw this one he got life in prison um i think without parole i'm pretty sure without parole but he got life in prison like your life is oh you'll never be able to get out because you robbed somebody and instead of just taking the money and going you decided to shoot two people and kill one of them for for absolutely no reason people work hard for their money and here you people come just you know, messing stuff up. You robbers. When I say you people, I mean people that rob, kill, people like that. So don't twist my words. Fortunately, Martin survived the shooting but sustained serious injury. Before the judge announced the sentence that Jaleel would be facing, Portia's family got the chance to yeah, address the jury and the man who took their to daughter like away sorry. from them. Sharon Brooks, Portia's this mother, way, brought way. the box containing her daughter's ashes to the courtroom as she had for previous court dates. She stated that Smith Riley had ruined her life and killed her identity as a mother of three. This is what I have left because of his greed, his selfishness, his complete disregard and disrespect of others and life. But as you can see, I get nothing back except the reality that she is gone. Tia Marie Brooks, Portia's sister, also spoke emotionally and requested that Smith Riley be handed the maximum sentence. See, now he want to cry. To deal with life without Portia, so he should deal with life without, without parole. Then, Aaron, who Jaleel shot in the head, spoke to the court. Well, she's still here with us, and, and she will always be here. So, she's, my, she's our angel looking Damn, over us. Damn, I wonder how you doing now. Hard times. As if Smith Riley's crime was not outrageous enough, his reaction to his sentence was even more dramatic. During the trial on August 11th, 2021, Smith Riley pleaded guilty to aggravated murder and attempted murder. However, he later decided to withdraw his guilty plea against the advice of his attorneys. Well, from the beginning, this was an emotional day for the families of both of these victims. But when Smith Riley decided to reverse his plea halfway through the sentencing hearing, they were shocked and his attorneys were too, in part because it puts the death penalty back on the table. Prior to receiving his sentence, Jaleel was heard apologizing in court as what appeared to be a last attempt at showing remorse. Yeah, nobody barring that. Look how you looking at him. <laughs> Additionally, Jaleel's attorney made a final attempt at saving face. And he knows that he can't go back in time and not do what he did. Despite the tears and the apologies, Judge Charles Kubicki, presiding over the case in Hamilton County Common Pleas Court, denied Smith Riley's request and sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The 23-year-old monster that is currently rotting behind bars collapsed to the floor of the courtroom <laughs> upon receiving his sentence. I don't Smith know Riley why also collapse is this a funny word. Like, you collapsed on the floor. Like, this is what I don't understand. You killed two, I mean, you killed one person. What you thought you wasn't gonna get caught? You thought it wasn't cameras? I know it was 2013, but like, I don't think you criminals really like think it through, like, you know what could happen after. But I, I, I don't know why he's falling out because if anybody should be like that, it's the mother, the mother of the the kid that you took. Like, it's crazy received an additional sentence of 11 years for a related attempted murder charge. However bad you think Smith Riley's case was, it can't be compared to the infamous case of TJ Lane. This is TJ Lane, who's facing charges for multiple murders in Ohio. TJ Lane was a convicted American murderer who gained notoriety after committing a horrific crime at Chardon High School in Ohio. On February 27th, 2012, the Ohio Police Department responded to multiple calls from teachers and students that there was an active shooter in the building. High school 
We got shot fired gun shot. Multiple gunshots. According to police reports, Lane entered the school and headed to the cafeteria. It was here that TJ Lane opened fire and killed three students and severely injured three others. Six people got physically harmed at the hands of TJ Lane that day, but hundreds... If I never, I never understand. Pollen? Not the vibe. Plant Wait, a female tree to help reduce pollen levels. Claritin diversity tree. Not thousands I never of understand, people left. Like, if, 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 you, if your life is that bad and you want to end it, like, I don't think su suicide is not really the option. But I don't feel like if your life is that bad, you should take people out with you. Like, you see all these mall shootings and school shootings. And usually the shooter just kills himself after. But it's like, what is the point of even killing up? Like, I can never wrap my head around it. Because if you're going to kill yourself, even though that's not, I don't think you should do that. Why do you have to take out people that have nothing to do with whatever you're going through? Why do you have to take them out? Why can't you just... I think y'all understand what I'm saying. It, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Chardon High School on February 27th, 2012 with intangible pain that will last through eternity. Glances of your friends laying all over the place. There's blood, there's people screaming, everybody's running in different directions, and you're just trying to get out. I saw a kid holding a gun pointed towards a group of kids. Do you remember the look on the gunman's face? I never looked at his face, I just looked at the gun. I still can't think about it all, because it's just so scary. Lane's actions sent shockwaves through the community. He was swiftly apprehended and charged with three counts of aggravated murder, two counts of attempted aggravated murder, and one count of felonious assault. As if the murders were not bad enough, Lane showed no remorse for his actions at the trial and refused to cooperate with his attorneys. Instead, he appeared in court wearing a t-shirt with the word killer written on it, and even shit. gave the middle finger to the victim's <laughs> families. During the sentencing hearing, Lane made a shocking statement. The statement caused outrage and disgust, not only among the families of the victims, but also nerves. across the entire nation. The judge presiding over the case, Judge David Fury, described Lane's behavior as heinous, unprovoked, and senseless, and sentenced him to three life sentences in prison without parole. Lane didn't even bat an eyelid when he heard his sentence. He remained emotionless and unremorseful. Lane's you behavior and reactions were likened to that of a psychopath. However, not every convict remained emotionless after hearing their sentence, like in the case of Ryan Stone. Mm. This is Ryan Stone, who is facing charges for going on a crime splurge throughout the nation, including kidnapping and assault, all of which was captured and broadcasted live by helicopters. I think I've seen this the somewhere. chase began after Stone hijacked a car with a four-year-old boy inside and drove off, leading police on a dangerous pursuit that lasted more than an hour. During the chase, Stone drove up to 100 miles per hour and was reckless in every regard of the word. He's seen here overtaking an innocent civilian on the highway, throwing them out of the car before carrying on in the new vehicle. First of all, That's first of all, all, first of all, first Watch of all, first here first as he exits. Why, why, why do you people drive with your car doors open? None of this would have happened if you locked your doors. Like, I thought when you drive, the car automatically locks the doors for you. But maybe that's just newer cars. But it's like, how do you get your car hijacked while you're driving it? If the door, like, can never be me. It's the highway, opens the car door at full speed, then slams onto the brakes right before crashing into another car parked in an intersection. Investigators believe this was a sorry attempt at another carjacking. Stone also crashed into several other vehicles during this chase causing numerous injuries. At one point, he even came inches from taking out a policeman who was trying to place stop sticks on the highway. He eventually crashed the stolen car and attempted to flee on foot. What? Yo, <laughs> you think it's GTA? However, he was quickly apprehended by police and placed man. in a holding cell. 
As if Stone's actions weren't bad enough, he was caught on tape boasting about his actions to a friend who visited him in the cell. Hey, did you know I made the news in the UK and Australia? Yeah, <laughs> my lawyer told me I made the news in the UK and Australia. If you type in Grand Theft Auto on funny. YouTube, my shit comes up first. Ryan also believed that he should be compensated for his viral car chase because the news channels are using his car chase footage. I'm going to contact Channel 7 News or have you contact Channel 7 News or somebody. You guys are getting paid using my name. Stone was charged with 26 crimes involving kidnapping, motor vehicle theft, assault, and eluding police. Stone's sentencing hearing was emotional. In court, many of his victims and their families can be heard speaking about the impact of his crimes on their lives. Some spoke of physical injuries they had sustained in the crash, while others described the emotional trauma they had experienced due to the incident. Stone spoke at the hearing. He cried, expressed remorse for his actions, and apologized to his victims. Isn't it ironic that in the same week, Ryan exactly was captured in the video right. on the left laughing and boasting about his crimes. In the other shit. video on the right, he seemed crying and begging for sympathy from the court, as he finally realized the severity of his actions. Despite his apology, the judge in the case was unmoved, noting that Stone had shown a pattern of criminal behavior and that he posed a threat to society. The judge handed down the maximum sentence possible. Stone pleaded guilty to all charges and was sentenced to 160 years in prison without the possibility of parole. Stone was in tears when he learned he'd spend the rest of his life in prison. Stone blamed his actions on drugs and his show of remorse might be sincere. However, some convicts are rather shocked you by their sentences, well like in the case of Seth Welch and Tatiana years. Fusari. This is <laughs> Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari, who are facing charges for first-degree murder in Michigan. Seth and Tatiana were the parents of 10-month-old Marianne Welch, who police said died of malnutrition and dehydration due to neglect the worst parents on ever. August 2nd, 2018, in Solon Township, Kent County, Michigan. Child Protective Services had been involved with the family since 2014 after THC was found in the system of their firstborn child. Mary weighed only eight pounds at the time of her death. Her parents refused to seek medical help, citing religious reasons and distrust of the medical system. The family home was found to be unhygienic during the initial investigation, with evidence of vermin, insects, and mold. The doctor who performed the autopsy confirmed that Mary was suffering from chronic malnutrition caused by withholding food and water. Seth's call to 911 revealed their level of neglect for their daughter. And he said, when you found her, she was already believed to be deceased, right? Yes. Yeah. And then when you found her, did you find out what the lawyer told you? Yeah, that's what the When in court, the prosecutors made sure to highlight just how neglectful the parents were of their 10-month-old child. You didn't know that. So you find your infant daughter dead and you call a lawyer? <laughs> like you, you can't make it, you cannot make it up. And then he gonna say his daughter is dead as a door now, not even one tear. He's not even crying. And don't tell me you didn't intend that because you didn't get her little tush out of that crib. You left her in there. You ignored her because she was an inconvenience. The couple was initially charged with felony homicide murder in August 2018. In June 2020, Seth Welch was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. In 2021, Fusari testified that her husband was abusive and that she was not allowed to take Mary to the doctor. He got very angry with me. He smacked me across the face he, and he told go me that he knows she was how I, it too. he said, you know what the f I think about doctors. I told you Mary is fine. She's fine, now drop it. In November, 2021, Fusari was sentenced to life exactly. without parole for first Nobody degree murder him. and an additional 15 Still to 30 asshole. years for first degree child abuse. When the judge pronounced their life sentence, Seth's mouth dropped open in shock and Fusari mm -hmm. started crying. For many people, this couple got what they deserved. However, this wasn't the only and time a convict a got jail. a sentence that felt like justice. There was the case of Esteban Carpio. This is Esteban Carpio, who is facing charges for murder in Rhode Island. Carpio is an American murderer who killed a detective at a Providence police station in 2005. Providence Police Detective Sergeant James L. Allen 
and another detective were questioning Carpio at the Providence Police Headquarters for accosting an 85-year-old woman, Madeline Gatta. According to police reports, the second detective left to the third floor interview room to retrieve some water. It was here where things took a turn for the worst. Carpio had asked for water, and the two detectives that were in there with him, one left to go get the water and lock the door behind him. And they tragically heard Detective Allen say, I think he's going to kill me. He's got my gun. He's going to kill me. By the time they broke him down, the officer was dying, and Carpio had jumped out the window. However, he was recaptured a few minutes later amid struggles with the police. But that was not the end of the drama. Due to the risky jump and struggles with the police, Carpio sustained injuries. When it came time for his sentencing, Carpio came to court wearing a mask designed to keep him from spitting at or biting others. His face was red. You like somebody beat the shit out of him, bro. Yeah. Hot, hot, hot. It's going to Double be a ad. roaster. Damn. Don't roast. Call Seacoast. This is probably going to be the last one, too. Bruised and swollen. When he appeared in court, his family members screamed and accused the police of brutality. I was not guilty, Steven. The family believed that they forced him to wear the mask to try and hide the brutal revenge beating they it gave Carpio does look like that, behind though. closed doors. In fact, Carpio's aunt went on live TV to say this. It's gross police brutality. I mean, he killed somebody. He was though, mentally so. ill and he, and he needed help and we couldn't get it. We tried and tried and he didn't deserve this. However, Providence Police Chief Dean M. Esserman argued that Carpio's injuries were sustained when he jumped from the third floor interview room and resisted arrest. The FBI later investigated the police, but it was concluded that they did not use excessive force. No civil rights violation when uh, injuries are um, I'm not lie, incident to arrest. Meaning, if he's fighting the police officers, the officers have the right to use whatever force necessary to subdue the subject. On June 27, 2006, a jury found Carpio guilty of the murder of Detective Allen and the stabbing of Madeline Gatta. Despite his plea of insanity, Carpio was sentenced Wait, to life in prison stabbed? without parole. At first, he showed little reaction to his sentence and remained unmoved. However, later, in an attempt to win over the jury, he was heard apologizing for his actions. Every day, I face the facts of what I did and what happened. Carpio claimed he was suffering from mental illness at the time of the crime, but the court didn't entertain the claims. However evil you think Carpio is, how does he compare to Kayla Mendoza, who tweeted this the same night she took two girls' lives in a deadly drunk driving crash? This is Kayla Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza, two counts of DUI manslaughter. It's count one and count three. How do you plead? who is facing charges for double manslaughter, among other charges in Florida. The 20-year-old woman who was not licensed to drive was convicted of the murder of two women while drunk driving in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on November 17, 2013. Before the crash, Mendoza went to a local bar with her manager and colleagues from her job where she drank two fishbowl margaritas. A few hours later, Mendoza got behind the wheel of a Hyundai Sonata and drove the wrong way on the Sawgrass Expressway. Weed could never. I just had to add that in there for the people. Weed could never. I hopped into her car and went speeding the wrong way down the freeway at more than 80 miles an hour. She collided head on with another car, killing these two beautiful young women, Marissa no Petronio and Caitlin Ferrante. Both just 21. Mendoza was charged with two counts of DUI manslaughter while impaired, two counts of DUI manslaughter with an unlawful blood alcohol level, two counts of vehicular homicide, and two counts of driving without a license causing death. Mendoza's then boyfriend owned the Hyundai Sonata involved in the crash and explained that the too drunk to care tweet was directed toward him. The too drunk to care tweet was for my boyfriend because he was upset I was out hang out with them and with Marcelo drinking because he wanted me to be home. The Ferrante and Catronio families filed lawsuits against Mendoza, her boyfriend, the T-Mobile store where Mendoza was employed, and the Tijuana Taxi Company. On May 4, 2015, two months after pleading guilty to two DUI manslaughter charges, Mendoza was sentenced to 24 years in prison. Mendoza was apologetic throughout the trial. She, when she heard off. her sentence, her apology and crying intensified. 
matter how much time passes, I'm gonna live with that in my heart every day. After her sentence, Mendoza will also serve six years of probation and is permanently banned from driving a motor vehicle. Mendoza's apologies and remorse showed that she may yet be saved. However, the same cannot be said for Adrian Dunn. 24 years killing two people, she got off. But y'all, we're gonna stop the video right there. Part two will be coming to this, so stay tuned. It's a long video, but part two will be coming, so stay tuned. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I love y'all. Hold on. I love y'all. Like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget this. If you even if you don't want to subscribe, click just the thumbs up button, and I'll appreciate that more than anything. Love y'all. Thank for all the support. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. We out. God took me right about my sins, I can't go back no. Holy step and gaining real knowledge, you can soak that yep. Thank God he gave me good light and brought hope back yes. Big stepping on the devil's head, got my toe fat They said I